Some may find the following disturbing. Discretion is advised. Listen in your office, in your car, or even your neighborhood bar. You can listen with your whole family. Fucking bar room! Have fun. I hope you get car bombed. How about you fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Mm, na na na. A bear's ball room. They're the ones that fight for truth. Every week on a hundred proof. Even if the bears win or lose. A bear's ball room. They're the ones that fight for truth. Every week on a hundred proof. No matter if the Bears win or lose Yo, first, the smartest man, no tweets, he's ever missing Impossible, the mission, call out frauds with precision The Bears 100 proof, he faces number one Adora Slaying dumb tweets, far side like Conforra Never one to back down, shame be calling a fraud Now dumbest tweets of the week, the mailman goes all out Cheers, Bears fans The fire Puerto Rican bar, keep it for Chicago land He's the godfather, the one, the real producer Always keeping the show together with the voice that will seduce you Biscuit now the fire fox, the old timer never, never IPAs, drafts, malls, crafts, bar, keep takes the shots. Bar flies appreciated worldwide. Canada, Scotland, England, Brazil, Mexico, and Dubai. Dr. Phil is the guy, the one to realize that the bar room needed a show with an endless suit supply. Go big coat for the narrative on color. Brought the Jaces of Gabe from Mitchell. Now I'm the Asha. Standing up for the truth, 100 proof with the guys. Almost burned off the show, but I came back for the bar flies. Flies, flies, flies. flies. Fuck a fraud in his keyboard, Twitter, tough guys surround us. Raining truth on the bears worldwide, bar flies us now. This us. is the number one pod, that's the reality of the truth. And if you don't know us by now, Bears 100 proof. A bears bar room, they're the ones that fight for truth. Every week on 100 proof, even if the bears yeah, win or lose. A bears bar room. They're the ones that fight for trolls Every week on 100 Proof 100 No matter if the Bears win or lose The NFC North 2018 Division Proof. Champions They're the ones that fight for trolls Every week on 100 Proof yeah. 100 Even if the Bears Proof. win or lose boy, no MC for the Bears on room They're the ones that fight for trolls Every hit. week on 100 Proof Bring it in. No matter if the Bears win or lose And they win the NFC North. You know you got to feel it. You got to feel it. Cheers, Bears fans. This is a special Bears 100 proof. My name is Aldo Gandia. I serve the drinks in this raucous, rowdy roadhouse bar. But don't you worry, the stars of our show are here, and they include Greg Braggs Jr., who has now taken the title of the smartest man in the bar room to the <laughs> <laughs> most ruthless, the lowest level, the, the most ruthless prankster in the world. This guy doesn't give a shit about anybody's feelings. <laughs> we'll get into that in a little while. Also, Shane, the smartest man in the bar room, bar saws here, and draft Dr. Phil Atoshin. Of course, the major reason we are live on the air tonight on Friday night. April 3rd is the Bears press conference today where Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy started talking about all sorts of shit that we've been talking about here for the last several weeks. And it was revealed, uh, no, I should say it was confirmed that Ryan Pace is a fucking liar. (laughs) And we're going to talk about that. (laughs) Why don't don't we uh, we talk about football first, fellas, and then we'll talk about this prank stuff that uh, we were were talking about for a half hour before we came on the air and having some good laughs about that. But uh, guys, uh, first of all, any of the three of you not had a chance to listen to the press conference today with Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. All right. The only one I wasn't able to listen to was Graham. I listened to him to the rest. I didn't listen to Graham either. Okay. 
So I, I've, uh, I'm focused p- primarily on the Pace-Nagy part of it, and we obviously can talk about the other players that joined in, but uh, I've got sound from the press conference from the P- Pace-Nagy, and I definitely want to, to get uh, your input on stuff. But first, uh, let me ask how can you I- guys are doing. Draft Dr. Phil, how you doing, brother? <laughs> oh, I've had a uh, very difficult day, a stressful <laughs> one. Started out with a fridge freezer breaking down. God damn. You know me with the pandemic and everything. I mean, I get up and get in a zoot suit to go to the store grocery shopping. Zoot All suit. these steaks. I got fucking <laughs> everything you can imagine. Protective. I got masks, hats, double sets of underwear, mm-hmm. long johns long socks, boots to go to the grocery to go shop. So all this grocery is melting. Mm. I didn't know. So now I'm switching it over first thing in the morning. I got that. My son's glasses broke. Jesus. Everything's going wrong. Everything's breaking. Me and Steph are like drama filled. So then the prank happens, which the ultimate tease for later in the show it makes everything even worse at my house. Yeah. In my heart. This, so, this yeah, prank my day was, has been exhausting. This prank was uh, highly disruptive to the life of the Atoshan <laughs> family, I should say, not just Phil. <laughs> well, again, we'll talk about the that. The whole family. <laughs> but can I just say this real Please. quick? Please. A lot of fans are asking me, and we're going to get into this, but we've said it for weeks, as you said, Aldo, on the show, and Bears fans flip-flop and people, oh, Twitter, thank God I'm not on it because some of the screenshots that I get, it's like, <laughs> you just said the opposite yesterday. Like, right. I just have no patience for that. It's like, stand somewhere and believe in something. We can't even get fucking people to stand six feet away from each other or stay in the fucking house. And then here we are, and they're doing exactly what I said you need to do. Make this an open fucking competition. Whether you're talking out of the side of your mouth, or not, we're going to see that. But for right now, they didn't just hand the job. They said this is what it's going to be in that presser, as we're going to get into. But mm-hmm. on this network, football-wise, that's really what it needed to be. That's really what it needed to be. There you go. Shane, how are you, brother? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Just loving seeing my friend Phil on, <laughs> on the line looking healthy. Oh my god. <laughs> Greg, how are you, man? <laughs> I am also very happy. You are I'm happy as a clam. I'm happy to still be oh. invited on this show. <laughs> I feel like my What's number that? my my time is running out. <laughs> so, so you you actually went to work today and laid some bricks. You do anything else? <laughs> Fucker. Oh my god. <laughs> he's looking at it. He's trying to look innocent. We'll get yeah. to all that later. Greg is going to monitor uh the chat room because we're gonna talk football here for the next hour. Hardcore core football. The uh Ryan Pace and uh, Matt Nagy had a teleconference call with a handful of reporters. A lot of information was laid out. And as Phil said, you know, we basically know now that there is a competition going on between Nick Foles and Mitchell Trubisky. And when Ryan Pace said that Mitchell Trubisky was the number one quarterback, uh, you know, he wasn't really telling the truth here. And I got to tell you something. The reporter of the day has to be. Who do you got? Who do you got? Has to be Hub Arkish. Has to be. Who do you got? You mean the way that he nailed him down? Fucking A. I yeah, got I got yeah. it queued up right here if you want to hear. Hub is the only one. Cue it up. Go ahead. Play okay, it. here it is. Nice sweatshirt, Greg. Hub, um, I, I know you said clearly open competition, but I just want to make sure it reported it absolutely right. Because when we last visited in a different world, you said you wanted competition, but that Mitch was still the starter. Is Mitch still number one on the depth chart, or is there no depth chart right now? Yeah. Yeah, so, so, and that's a good question. When we walk yeah. out on the yeah. first day, whatever it is, whether it's OTAs or whether it's training camp, <laughs> Mitch will be going first in the huddle. Uh, and, and, and those guys know that. That's not news to them. That's not something that they're hearing for the first time. Uh, 
the one thing that again you're gonna you guys will realize about Nick Foles is that uh, he's very aware. He understands what's going on. He understands the situation, and and that's gonna that's another part of this too is is that. And so, um, you know, Mitch is going to be out there, but at the same time, it's going to be equal. And we as coaches need to make sure we do the right thing in regards to equal reps uh, and make sure that they're going against – they're playing with similar or the same players on offense and going against the same players on defense. So there will be some juggling that we have to do. It might be a little different at times on how we do it, how we get to it. But I can promise you this, it's going to be completely fair. It's going to be, um, it's going to be extremely competitive. In a good way, it's going to be a healthy competitiveness. And, uh, you know, in, in the end for us, it's going to be a collaboration of, of what we all feel. And, and it's, uh, I think that that's all that those guys really ask for and want as competitors. And then the other thing, too, that I just want to say is it's easy to say um, wherever this takes us, whenever it is that we end up naming a starter, uh, you know, this is a process. And so with that, uh, becomes responsibilities of winning and playing well. And so we want to make sure that, that uh, as we do this, those guys know that, and they already know it. So that, that's, that's where we're at with that. Um, um, real quick, just with me, and I think when you say open competition, um, you know, this is an open competition. They've both been told that. I think it's the best way to do it. And I think the good thing is just honesty and transparency <laughs> with both players as we go through it. And, you know, we want what's best for the Chicago Bears. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And that really applies to any position on our team. And, and for this situation, hey, let, let these guys battle it out. Let the process naturally happen. And over time, that decision will be made. Now, it would have been nice if Hub or somebody would have asked the follow-up. When, were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would have been nice if they would have said, when you talk about honesty and transparency, you mean not bullshitting them like the way you typically bullshit all of us and, and everybody else, probably in the organization? Phil, what are your thoughts? They went in so many circles there. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, like, it's like those tweeters that say from what their source is hearing. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And then it never happens. And, well, they heard that. I mean, I, it wasn't me. And then when it happens, everyone's like, wow, you had it first. And they're like, yes, of course I did. <laughs> and that's what are, what are you saying here? Like they both know he's going first. He said something in at the Indianapolis that Mitch is our quarterback. Mitch is our number one. Today, they talked in circles. So that gives you pause. They're not being transparent. They're saying we're being transparent with them. And then they doubled down. Well, Nick knows. Nick knows. Yeah, Nick knows what you told him, <laughs> that he's going to be the quarterback. That's the way I'm hearing this dialogue that they're trying to sell. Instead of saying, you know what, just short, to the point. It's going to be an open competition. Who the fuck cares who's first in the fucking huddle? He's the first one out there in the huddle. Well, that's what drove me crazy. That's a fucking coach that sucks. That's what drove that's me coach. crazy with What does Nag that matter, Shane? What is with, that? Nat, with Nagy and Pace, and both of them, yeah. they, were, they were praising, they would praise fools, and they're like, guys, you got to realize that he's just a, he's a, just a really a great person. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You know, I want to win ball games, and then then they would switch back and they would uh, praise Mitch by saying, you know, we told Mitch, you know, that we were gonna uh, bring in Nick Foles for some competition, and and Nick and Mitch just showed that he's a competitor. <laughs> what? Okay, he whatever. He hasn't shown shit. How did he show? Some <clears throat> reporter I, did say. It, how did he show that he's a competitor? Right. So, yeah, was Patrick, that Pat I think, Finley. Patrick, yeah, I think Pat yeah. Finley. That. But that's at least. The one thing that I did want out of this, I wanted them to come out and, and and do one of three things. I wanted them to come out and say, Mitch is the number Mitch is the quarterback. Or I want them to come out and say, Nick Foles is the quarterback. He's number one. Or I wanted them to come out and say, This is a competition. We're opening it up. And you know, they they did that. And thankfully, and back to our, our previous show when we all spoke on this, that's really what we all wanted was the, the open competition and then right. them to at least be honest about it. But I said, I think one thing 
that we haven't really gotten to yet, but that is huge, is when they asked about them playing in the preseason games. Oh, God. This Did is they a admit whole, their fucking mistakes? A whole different or... departure from what, you know. Hello, what, this is she... a new style of football. We don't play in the preseason. <laughs> right. We're going we're gonna to bubble wrap them. They're going to get calloused up without playing. Yeah. yeah and you heard, up, heard, you heard Doug, 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 Doug yeah. goes, Doug goes, well, no, you, you said this, I didn't, but then he, then he started <laughs> to speak how ridiculous it was. It was. And yeah. honestly, fuck you, any other fucking podcast out there or blog, because we're the only fucking ones that push the fuck back every fucking time and said it's not right that they're not fucking practicing. It's not. And they're not playing in preseason games. And I'm sorry. Pat my fucking self on the back. Pat my boy Shane on the fucking back. Pat Aldo on the back. Even though Aldo got a little, well, maybe this is the new way. But he still sided with us. Yes, he did. Fuck, fuck Braggs because he wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> and for and other reasons. Fuck, <laughs> fuck Braggs for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, <laughs> that's the difference. You would have had the answer about Kyle Long. Oh, yeah. Bears bar. Would have been answered. Yeah. Fucking seven sports mockery stories later. <laughs> Bears barroom said it first. Barely seem out. We said it first, right? That's we were first telling you this isn't how football is played. Doug Plank, as you said. Mm-hmm. Greg asked him the great question. I don't know if Shane gave you that question or you came <laughs> up with it on your own. <laughs> Saying about, do you practice, do you play your fucking starter? Or maybe it was Shane, because he talked about the yeah, goat. It was, me. It was, it was you. Me. Good. Yeah, because I'm like, how do, you watch, how do you watch Tom Brady go out and get preseason snaps and meaningless this. games, and then Mitch Trubisky can't? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Exactly. And they changed their tune completely. Aldo, you have the audio of that? Um, I think I do. This is uh, Nagy on the open competition. I think he says it here. Number one, what we're trying to do is what's best for the Chicago Bears. Plain and simple. That, that, that's what it comes down to. And so like I was saying, Ryan and I have had great talks with both of them. What's important and what you all are going to find out in this process is going to be real simple. It's going to be very transparent and very honest. And, and so uh, what I thought was really neat when we did talk to Mitch, which was, which was, which is uh, speaks to who he is. Is you can feel how much of a competitor, and you, you you know it, and you see it. He's a competitor now. He's embracing it and excited to get back back to work. Um, you know, with that said, part of the conversation that that you know we discussed too was understanding here uh, the the big picture. Is I know that Mitch is, Mitch gets a lot of this, but you know we could have been a lot better coaching uh, schematically, and I could have been a better head coach. And, and then we can, we all, as we all know, you know, we can always be better players around them as well. So that's a focus there. Uh, but, but Mitch has, Mitch is uh, really embracing it. He's had an unbelievable um, uh, personality throughout it. He understands that all he wants to do is be the best quarterback he can be for the Chicago Bears. And, and that's what he's going to do as we move on here. Nick, the same thing. You know, I have a history with Nick. I know who he is as a person. Um, he's been great as well. Uh, he's a special person, and, and Ryan and I looked into that, knowing that uh, when 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 this went down, and and I think that that's very important that we don't lose sight of that as we go through this this competition. Uh, he's been in this position before, and he's handled it uh, great. You know, I, I personally went through it with him in, in Kansas City, a little different, but but I know obviously who he is. Um, it's going to be a process evaluated over time, and it, it, like Ryan said, it's a collaboration. Of, of Ryan, some of, some of the guys on his staff, myself, and then along with Bill Lazor, Dave Ragone, John DiFilippo. Uh, and those guys all have extensive uh, background with quarterbacks, and we're looking forward to that. Um, you know, we're not there yet. Uh, you guys will have questions, but we'll, we'll have a great plan on how to evaluate it. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately what it really comes down to is, is winning, scoring points, um, you know, physical and mental toughness. Uh, and then obviously command and leadership with some other things. So with that, we'll, we'll leave. Uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't there, uh, but uh, I know no, I have the, it. I'll, the, I'll find it. The reporter later. asks them in the competition, yeah. is, are they going to play in the preseason? Right. I think. It, yeah. 
Was it well, Mark Brody? Someone now. Yeah, I can't remember it? exactly who it was, but I said, back to your... It Still, to this point, it seems like if they're going to... They don't want it. Listen, oh I am God. not... I am not placing all of the blame at Mitch's feet. I'm not. But other than them coming out and saying, you know, the quarterback needs the quarterback needs to play better. But then they all they follow it up with a a litany of other things. At what point are they hold? You know, they said, hey, we we wanted to bring in competition because competition brings out the best in everybody. Right. The fuck first question after that from a reporter should have been. Well then, why didn't you bring in legit competition for him when he got, you know, when he got here, when he took over by himself in 2018? Chase Daniel wasn't legit competition. If you were doing what was best for the Chicago Bears, then you just admitted that you failed. Yes. And you know, same thing at right guard. Did they come out and legitimately say that Effetti was going to be the starting right guard, or did they, did they just say that he would be in that position? Because I missed. He was going to be in that position. Okay. Because that would say thing. that he's the starter, but okay, they really someone asked them if he's going to play, and they like, but they mentioned no other guards. Right. Like I was hoping he'd say, you know, I like Alex. We have Alex Bars there. They and gave he, you no. And they paid him. They paid him four million dollars, and I think it's I think it's very very notable and did. important that they mentioned Juan Castillo was very yes. high on him coming out. Yep. Well, in they the said they were high on him. They and, were. And, and Juan as, Castillo. As Castillo. Yeah. And yeah. they said Juan is excited to work with this young man. Yeah. But going back to this, Aldo. Mm-hmm. So you're the reporter. Mm-hmm. I'm the head coach. I want you to ask me about the competition at quarterback or however you want to ask it. Okay. And this is how I want to. This is how. They should answer this. Ready? Coach Atoshin, uh, we want to know, all the fans and the media, we want to know how this competition between Nick Foles and Metro Trubisky is going to uh, work. How, wh- what, are you, what are your plans during the preseason? Uh, how many snap counts and so forth? What can you share with us about this open competition? Well, that's a great question. Aldo. Yeah, that's a prerequisite. <laughs> since you told me, that since, every just, since you told me to ask it, I'm sure it's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was mocking them. You but can yeah. audio for every question. Yeah, that that's a really great question, Hub. Yeah, Hub. Thanks. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Catch every time they did it, every reporter. <laughs> Stacy, that's a great question. Please be um, nice to us. Like Stacy, great question. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your family's great. It's a great question. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't forget that part. But anyway, um, let me answer this now. I got to be perfectly transparent with you. Ryan has talked about regression. You've heard it all over the news and everything. I need to be better as a head coach. Mitch has to be better as a quarterback. Open competition brings out the best, brings out the champion in them. I brought a guy that I'm very familiar with that I know is going to come in here and attack this position like he wants it. And I hope that Mitch understands, and I've spoken to Mitch, and I think that he understands that the best man wins because I want to do what's best for the Chicago Bears. And at the end of the day, those other 53 players in there are set, are being told the same thing. So... I brought this guy in here to compete, to be the best. And if Mitch isn't ready, if he isn't ready, then we're going to have to do something else. But right now, in April, the competition is on. And I hope everybody understands that. Just come on 100 proof. (laughs) Just come on 100 proof. Now, what if your head coach said that? Do you walk away ready to watch a competition happen? Hell yeah! That's so. So that's Phil, if you, you, if be. you be Ryan Pace, and I'm going to ask you a question as a reporter. <laughs> okay, one second before you do. <laughs> do you see what they did? They like protected Mitch's feelings a little bit. That's what I was saying earlier. That's right. 
It makes no sense. Yes, but yeah. Mitch is really showing leadership. He's what the fuck? What is he doing? He's a fuck. He's getting paid to play the game of football. It, I said it before. Shane has said it before. You have Tooch pulling the audio. If he's not fucking ready for comp- competition, then fuck a Mitch. Because he's it's not, not the guy. On Mitch. It is on Mitch if he's not ready. That's right. He better be. If Listen, I was a competitive motherfucker. I'm still competitive as fuck. If my coach gets, gets a player and puts him in front of me in practice, that shit would bother me, the fuck out of me. Just in practice. That's the makeup of being good. You don't want anybody in front of you. You strive to be the best. So if this signing is motivation for Mitch and he doesn't get it done, he's, he was wrong and you admit that. But to, to listen to these fucking guys, we're going to be transparent and then go back into some cultural protect Mitch and at the same time praise a little bit of Nick and be cautious in that fucking, what is it, corporate communicating world of bullshit, of bullshit. You're not being transparent. Transparent is what I did. Open. He knows it. He knows it. Best man wins. It's like a fucking race. Ready, set, go. Who gets to the finish line first wins, right? That's what this should be. Mm-hmm. You took one step forward to make it a competition, and then you take three steps back protecting feelings. This football is not a feelings protecting sport. You can't handle it. Get the fuck out the huddle. You can't handle being called speed bump Charlie. Block the fuck better. Work harder. Look at Doug Plank. 12th round pick. White boy. Can't run. Piece of shit. What is he? He goes in there and fucking buries you. And then again. And then again. Until they can't take him off the field. That's football. How many of those motherfuckers has Ryan Pace found? How many? We see Going Anthony on a Miller. Rant. We see Anthony Miller talking shit with fucking one catch for nine yards. Shut the fuck up and make a fucking play. We see Tariq Cohen running out of fucking bounds. Three yard game. Talking shit. Come on. This culture, this BU society fell in their face. And now we're here. And you're still taking steps backwards. Greg, just Coach, go you, ahead. Yes. Greg Coach, just are you going to shut up so I can ask Ryan yes. Pace my question? <laughs> Hold on, just a quick <laughs> second. Greg just posted in the chat room that Phil shouldn't be talking about feelings. <laughs> I did not fuck versus what Greg did, which you'll find out. Doing my chat master job. I did not. Do not listen to him, Phil. <laughs> this motherfucker is a pot stir. All for the day long. I'll what I can't say. Says, oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Do that. That's a great idea. <laughs> I can't say when I said it that all of you three were like Phil talking about feeling. <laughs> okay, Mr. Pace. Is okay, I'm, now I'm getting my – I'm going to turn my hat sideways yeah. to the right. And be Mr. Pace. Okay. Uh, you, you traded up for a uh, quarterback number two overall in 2017. The fact that he's heading into year four and you need to bring in competition to bring out the best in him in year four, is this an admission that you were wrong? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that pause. Imagine him. Wait, excuse me, sir. Was that, a, was that a good question? That was a great question. And I have to admit, Looking at where we regressed, it's not all on Mitch. I say it, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Come on and say it. It's not all on Mitch. <laughs> That's nice. That was pretty good. That's That's pretty good. <laughs> it pretty sounded like that. To the it sounded better. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's getting back in my good grace. <laughs> um, that would be backing this GM into a motherfucking corner. Honestly, how do you answer that as the GM? Like, because I know as the GM, I would have taken Deshaun Watson. 
100%. But isn't that a legitimate question? It where is. You fucking it's put honestly. Them on the spot? Let's see if I'm playing the role of him having to answer that. I know what he would say. Let's yeah, see. Be Do you want to hear what he would say? Yeah, let's admission. hear what he would say. An admission he would we all say, got better. <laughs> he's, listen, we, we regressed. This is about us getting better. Mitch knows how he's got to get better. He's read the book on leadership. He's caught up. He's read every chapter. And we're all getting back to where we need to be. And I think Mitch understands the importance and the value of that position. And ultimately, at the end of the day, it's about the Chicago Bears and the best for the bear. And he would do that and talk around it. And here's here's the follow-up question that would be asked okay. by Ruth from the Ozarks. Did you ever consider you're full of shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So Shane, as here Brian in the Shane. chat, I don't know if you want to respond to Chubbs82. Oh, you know, God, let me guess. <laughs> Chubbs says it's a fucking wrong thing. Mr. fucking... Reverse fucking okie doke. He's always oh. got you the reverse okie doke. Yeah. So oh, that, yeah, I'll give you a chance to rebuttal, but Chubbs82 says, that's kind of a dickhead question there, Shane. Who gives a flying fuck if he's wrong in the past? I want to know what they're doing going forward, not about the decisions they made in the past. That's over. Well, Chubbs, <laughs> it's kind of important because the quarterback that he drafted in the past is still on this fucking roster moving forward. So I'd say it's kind of important. <laughs> It, especially yeah, yeah. the fucking open competition. Of course it matters. That's like saying, oh, fuck, you fucked up 15 times in the past. Fuck it. It doesn't matter what we're going to do now. That That's how people get fired. They get fired. Let me say this as respectfully as I possibly can. Would you please kindly fuck yourself and leave me alone? He's got a point because you want to know what he's going to do to fix it, but... What he's trying to do to fix it is bringing in Nick Foles, somebody that his coaching staff is comfortable with. That's how he's trying to fix it. But how is asking your general manager who traded up for Mitch Trubisky, how is that a dickhead question? You should be putting them on the spot and making them uncomfortable. That's what the media... Well, isn't it, I guess the reason it's a dickhead question is because it's a rhetorical one. Of course, it's a mistake if he has to bring in a quarterback that's well, getting paid 20-some-odd million dollars. Yeah, well, so you... Why make him fucking answer it? Put hold his feet to the fire. That's listen. I, Shane, I guess I'm gonna side with Shane here because reality is you have to own your mistakes in life. And when you have a society of fanatical Bears fans waiting and believing in you in that moment to change the charter franchise history, we talked about it on the show. It had to be a quarterback. It had to be a quarterback. Mike Glennon wasn't the answer. Again, Bears Barroom, one of the only networks, one of the only sites saying that. And then for them to take Mitch Trubisky and have their faith in that, and the whole room was involved, and Ryan goes off and lists them. And then to this point, it would be like any business that they have to face the music you have to have him answer that question so the next time he's in that situation if he is in that situation that he's going to do the right thing because as it unfolded chubbs they didn't even do their due diligence on a deshaun watson they didn't even sit down and meet with the guy and how in god's name is that is that possible so i think it's holding this fucking guy that was handpicked by a shoe salesman in Ernie Accorsi to be the GM of the Chicago Bears, and you put your faith in the guy. And then you got other franchises out there who hired other GMs, making him look worse and worse as it goes. It's a fair question at this, rhetorical or not, Ryan Pace has to fucking face the music in this situation. He does. And if it was to the point where, yeah, I fucked up. Mitch still has an opportunity to prove me right. And that, and if you answer it truthfully, you move forward in that, and you also get better, and you get your fan base to believe in you moving forward. Because right now, I would say, I would love to know 
How many, Aldo, a poll for Bears Bar on Twitter. How many of you believe in Ryan Pace now? That would be a great. Uh, that's the fucking problem. 95% of them on Twitter, Phil. Yeah. Right now they don't believe in him. But then if Eddie Jackson goes out and has a pick six and Khalil Mack has a fucking sack and Mitch throws for four touchdowns in week one, every, every, oh, they, they're going to fucking change their mind. Just like. I don't agree with Chubbs at all that you can't ask a fucking question like that to hold the guy accountable that's had repeated. I've been a, the biggest pace supporter here. And yep. I saw that Chubb said, well, he's admitting his his mistake because they let Floyd go. So, okay, you just fucking let it go and don't talk about it? He's the general manager. You have to hold him accountable. What the fuck is wrong about saying what? How come you have to bring in competition in year four for for your hand-picked guy. Why? Answer the question. Is that that ruthless and out of bounds, Aldo? You've been in this industry. Is that is that, that out of bounds? No, it's not out of bounds. And, and frankly, it's a question that should be asked by the media and saying, we know that you guys are looking forward, but what do you say to fans who are upset yes. that th- there have been so many misses in the first round and there's so many still question marks regarding this team – primarily because the top draft picks made by this organization under your leadership have not panned out. What do you say to those fans? Because they want to know. So I, I think if it's phrased in a, in a way Matt, that it's it's a perfect uh, question. Yeah, imagine, there's a lot of that shit going on. Yeah. Imagine if he got asked that question and Ryan Pace said, well, none of that really matters because it's in the past. Everybody would be fucking furious. Mm-hmm. you got to hold these fuckers and nobody does. Come on. Come and on, Chubbs. You're better than that. Chica- and nobody, nobody in the Chicago does. media does. And it they is. It's because to. they're scared. Can't they're scared, scared to ask the tough question. Media has to be adversarial. It is their job to ask the tough questions, to not just kind of go along and so forth. you gotta, you got to get in there and, and ask questions that the fans are all talking about and because that's their job. It's not there to, to be uh, press, uh, uh, public relations people for them. No fucking way. Oh, who would do something like this? It's sociopathic, psychopathic. <laughs> so you guys didn't think they were doing that at all today. I mean, I listened to the presser no. with Pace and Nagy, and I thought they they doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on the quarterback competition. They did. They held I, his feet I do. to the fire. I, on, I, I do agree. If they're going to play in the preseason – you know, I thought, and and you know, I just I thought they there was a little more transparency than maybe you guys are giving credit for. No, did he say we are complete failures? No, because I think they still think that. I don't think anybody wants them to say that. I just think that they should be held accountable. I'm not asking him to say, oh, I I, I totally fucking blew that one. But you gotta asking a especially tough if question. you still got them fighting on your team for a spot, right? Well, that's right. the thing. That's well, the thing. I Send a message to Mitch. What if he point? said, listen, he regressed. He needs to play better. That message is heard. You're, you can he's in here because there. we have to. You Everybody can knows. Paper, and you don't have to fucking say 15. Well, he's right. a great guy. But if he's they super- don't spend 20 minutes with the media, which Pace didn't have to do and doesn't normally ever see the media, if he had just done short questions and it was a six minute interview, you guys would be sitting here saying, Oh, they were dodging and they got out of there too quickly. Shouldn't they be commended for sitting in there they and talking this, as long as they no, did? They do this was scheduled because of the signings. Yeah, they They've do done it year. before. They do it every year. They come out, they take a few questions, and then they bring the players out. We got another one coming up for the draft, and everybody's going to be like, he's not talking much about what he's going to do in the draft. This guy's a fucking asshole. <laughs> right. It's just like, what do we talk about in the in the in the uh, postseason presser? Oh yeah, you know we you know we believe in we really like Leonard. We really like where Leonard's going. You know, and what did we say here? It's Aldo. It's a fucking poker game. Don't believe what they say. You know, Mitch is our starting quarterback. Okay, so but we're going to go up. <laughs> Don't believe in any up. of that shit. He's They're going to lie all the time. Side. And they should lie. They should lie publicly about that stuff. I really but in believe- this case, you had an opportunity to, like Shane said, hold their feet to the fire and say, listen, we're not dumb. I want to hear you say it and own it. And – just like my transparency of them talking in circles, Greg. 
<laughs> Mitch, Mitch is a good leader. He's handling this well. I could tell you right now, he's ready. He's re- okay. I'm I don't think that was shit. talking in circles. I mean, yeah, it was. Uh. Explaining exactly what it is to both of them, I, I, that's why I understand both sides are going to be pissed because one, a lot of people just wanted Foles to be named the starter. I got what I wanted today. It's going to be a true well, competition, and Mitch gets first crack. That's, that's what I wanted. Now I thought it would go into the season because he wouldn't play preseason, but then he revealed, to our pleasure, he is going to play the preseason if there is a preseason. And I think that's a big dynamic of this that you guys should definitely touch on here. If there is no preseason, if there is no training camp, and we get to September and this whole pandemic is still going on, and then they say, okay, the doors are unlocked, everybody can come outside, but we, as still the gonna, NFL, we, we gonna, have to have a – right, so, but, so this is – right, so here's some hypothetical scenarios. Let's say it gets into September, and they say we're going to then – have a two-week preseason so everyone can get their t- systems right. ready, and we're going to push the season back. If it's right. only a two-week, like let's just say in that hypothetical world that it makes it all the way to September with this pandemic, and they say it's only a two-week preseason and the season starts after that, you better be ready to go. Who is the starter week one? You're going to play it out. You're gonna it's only – there's no camp. camp. There's, there, you know what I mean? Yeah, camp is two weeks of preseason. You just said it. So preseason one, Mitch is going to start the first half, and he's going to play with the starters. And then Nick's going to come in in the third quarter, and he's going to play with the backups. And then the next week, Nick is going to go in with the starters, and he's going to play the first half. And then Mitch is going to go in in the third quarter and play with the backups. And then guess what? As a coach, every rep in practice matters to me. How they handle themselves. Do they know every assignment? Remember when we go back? We go back to Aldo f- flipping out when I ask him, if they don't play in the preseason, what are you going to – if this isn't a true competition, what are you going to – then I got a huge issue with this. I'm sure Tooch could pull the audio of us saying this. If it's not an open competition, if they don't play in the preseason – that we have the wrong coaching staff. So now they're doing the Listen, things right. I think Everything that you've got oh. a general manager and a head coach that are fighting for their yeah. fucking jobs. Exactly. <laughs> well, something like they're that. Fighting. I don't know. I think what Greg is saying is correct, but the, where where my disconnect is with this, I think that they, I think that they were transparent with a lot of stuff. But what I can't stand is if you're gonna, and where I do agree with you, Phil is. The open competition part can be Mitch needs to play better. And then you don't have to kiss his ass for the next three minutes saying he's a competitor. He's got a super personality for this. He likes to read books. He's He loves puppies. All this shit. That to me is just ancillary bullshit that doesn't matter. It's like they're... they're it's about say, feelings. It's like they want to hold him accountable a little bit. But they don't want to piss them off. You know what I mean? And that's that's part of the competition. Should be part of the competition. Because if Mitch watched today and they said, hey, Mitch has got to play better just like we have to be better. And they fucking left it at that. And if Mitch has a problem with that, he was never the fucking guy in the first place. And that would hold true for any quarterback or any player. I just I hate the 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 transparency followed by here, we're gonna throw you we're gonna throw you some fucking rose petals and give you a hug and, well, and you know, pat you on the ass. And that's what they did every fucking time. And that's they who did. he is as a coach. That's who he is as a coach. When you're on his team, you he believes in you. He, he Cody Parkey, it was the same thing. He hit the goalpost four times against the Detroit Lions. They beat the Lions that day, but he, Cody Parkey somehow hit the goalpost four different times, four goalposts. And he walked to the podium saying, we believe in this guy. We're going to keep working with him. And look at how that turned out. <laughs> Right, right, but in his, for him, he be also the, didn't believe in playing in the gonna... preseason. Now he, he also didn't believe in playing in the preseason. Right. Now he's changed that philosophy. So there's nothing. But I don't think he's ever going to be the type of coach that publicly bashes a guy. You know? Bashing. No one gets, wanted him to bash. I'm not asking him to vilify anybody publicly. He could have came out and said, "Guys, this is an open competition. Listen, we all need to better. We all need to be better, and that includes Mitchell Trubisky." And end it, right? Right. Listening to my 
me as the head coach, you think, Shane? Shut your fuck nugget mouth and get the hell out. I, I'm just trying to give it both I'm sides of the coin. You, I did feel all like he they were. say is or, this is an open conversation. He did say this is going to be open honesty this year. We're going to be completely honest. And I feel like that was their shot at Trubisky was that comment. And in my head, I'm going, so what? You weren't being honest with them before? You know, like, <laughs> really? that was my next question. Well, they, had, they had no choice. They were never going to start Chase Daniel. Ever. Right. right. Ever. Well, and they and, and they also probably well, believe in themselves say, enough the to not think time. it was going to not work out last year. I mean, most people are positive. He's a positive thinking coach. He probably didn't go into last year thinking this was going to go in the tank. What have I said? What are the two biggest problems on this football team, Greg? You have watched the tape, never lies. You won't listen to all the show. Offensive line and yep. play calling. All right, there you go. The head coach and the offensive line. Mitch wasn't in that. So this guy learning on the job has hooked his cart to this young quarterback and fucked him over. I've said that a hundred times on this show. I've defended Mitch and everything. So now you're regrouping, regathering. And you're holding a presser, and you're you're doing what Shane said. Instead of just allowing Mitch, be you, Mitch. Do your same fucking spiel. Let Mitch be himself. Don't fucking he's yo know, petting puppies, and he's really such a leader. He's read the whole fucking black he's had a, book. He's had a great personality throughout he's had a this great entire personality process. Through it's a, been- I am pissed they, that he has a good personality about it. He should be fired, honest, fired up. Fucking right. fired up. Let's fucking well, they did, go. They did call him a competitor. I, I, I would love to be a fly on that wall. I mean, listen, Mitch isn't a dummy. He knew when the fucking season ended that they were going to do something at quarterback. We all knew. There was one guy under contract, and that was Mitch. And they were, they were always going to bring in competition. But like they I had said, to. I'm not asking. I, I think he's more confident than people think to as far as him thinking, sitting at his house right now, thinking whether or not he can beat Foles. I believe I don't know. Mitch has Where the is confidence. Mitch? To know Where is Mitch? I like that he's gone zero dark 30 for the whole year. He hasn't been speaking at like all. I don't like it. Any social mediums, I like it. Stay in I the dark. Like no hype like you were talking about a few weeks ago on 100 Proof. No more hype for this team. I'm gonna try not to hype as much as I yeah, love is to he hype. Really zero dark. He's all over his woman's Instagram page. Well, I mean, I you gotta you I, gotta follow your woman's rules when it comes to IT. Oh, really, Greg? Really? Jenny's <laughs> not an fuck. IT girl, so I don't have to worry I about that. I wasn't talking but, about that, you soft fucker. You're going soft yeah, on me. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, my boy Mitch. Who looks out for who harder, me for Mitch or Shane for Phil? Aldo. Uh, shoo, that's a tough one, man. Let, uh, let me uh, let me get back to you. I gotta I gotta ponder that one. <laughs> I gotta say though, I am just happy, yeah, we'll you know, up, that who, what they boss said. Morty, you or Greg? <laughs> what did you say? I didn't hear it. I said, Aldo, who, you lo- who loves their boss more, you or Greg? <laughs> <laughs> I love my boss. Listen, <laughs> he would have been the first to tell you. For those that you don't know, my boss Bud, who I talk about a lot on here. He had a heart attack yesterday, and it's scary, but he he made it. He's had a splint put in it, fell out, or whatever they call it, and they put it back in. I haven't been able to talk to him yet, but if I did, the number one thing that I would want to say to him is all those drop that he has. Oh, but I don't know if he... <laughs> yeah, I can find that. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. The number one thing that, uh, that my boss, Bud, would want me to say to him if I saw him right now is... I said I said him up twice, but here, that's here okay. it is. Big <laughs> deal. <laughs> you had a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, he did, but he made it. He's seventy. He shouldn't be busting his ass as hard as he does at work. But you can't tell them old time bricklayers anything. And uh, so I'm definitely worried about him. And maybe I don't show it in ways that other people show it, but. You know, I know if he if I saw him right now, he'd want me to say, you want me to come over and put a bullet in your head? So, I mean, that's just the kind of man Bud is. We like to joke around. Oh, you want me to come gonna, over and put a bullet in his head? He's going to be a tough something, so he can go through. <laughs> he's got a but little, he's got another one that he says to you. Said, what's that? He's got another one uh, that uh, that he says to you. Oh, this here it is. Hold on. 
Have fun. I hope you get car bombed. <laughs> That's what he says. To yeah, him. I missed him. He likes to call me uh, Daryl Dickley at work. And uh, what else is he? He calls me a few. I love Bud. I hope I'm hoping for a speedy recovery, but Absolutely. I want him to take his time. But back to the Bears because I'm a soulless. But, son. <laughs> but to to stay on the Mitch thing, I it was I thought it was an interesting co- quote from Kyle Long talking about the quarterback competition he goes this is the first time that mitch has really had an actual um person brought in you know to make it a true 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 competition and he said i think it's going to be interesting to see how mitch reacts to that what do you take that because there's a couple of ways you can take that he didn't come out and say hey i know mitch He's going to go out there. Kyle Long was walking around with horse blinders his rookie Mitch's rookie season because that was a competition at camp. It may not have been to John Fox because he didn't feel like starting the rookie yeah, like he they, should they, have. But the players, I was at camp every day that year, just like it was the next year when everyone started watching my videos. The year before, I'd post videos nobody would watch them when Mike Glennon was getting diced by Mitch every day, and he's playing right. with the third That's trip. not a competition, Greg. I your head it coach. was, though. It was, and the players coach. wanted sure. the kid to play. The, exactly. There was a, a lot it, of coaches that wanted the kid They're not making the decisions, though. Al Loggins told me in the tunnel week two while Mike Glennon's shitting his pants during the regular season costing them games that he wanted the kid in there. So it was a competition, and he got in there by week five. And Mitch, the whole time, and that was when I totally was won over by Mitch. He stood in there that whole shit show of the rookie season and stayed professional and waited his turn. And when he came out, he looked like he was, like, ready for a guy that they said was raw. I just liked what I saw. And now, yeah, of course he hasn't had competition since then. He was the he's number two pick in the draft. But now we've gotten to this point. Yes. I'm oh sure. my God, Greg, droning on and on. Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, Larrison. Now we get to this point, and we have another competition. I'm sorry, I do believe that rookie year was a competition for Mitch, and he stepped up as a very raw rookie against yeah, but a dog to shit Glenn. I point, get- Greg. This is the first time Chicago's announcing right. That it's a not competition. A- you can say it's a competition. Up. We it's all never knew. a competition if the lead, if the head guy Everybody, says, "This is my starter." It's not every, a fucking yeah, competition. Exactly. Everybody it was. but Mike Brez. It's knew. not though. It's it not. was his rookie year. I guarantee you guys were having shows talking about how Mitch should have been the of starter. Of we were. Yeah. That doesn't that matter. Third preseason game. If Mike Glennon doesn't lead them on a opening drive against the Titans, he doesn't win oh the starting God. job. We have fights. I told Lauren Cox off. Me and Shane had a huge fight before I'd ever even known any of you guys about right. this very thing. Mike Brez is was it a Glennon ridiculous. If your head coach comes out and says that this is my starting quarterback from fucking day one? No, it's not. Fuck a minute. Exactly. You can see that they're well, that competitive in practice. That was his fault. Well, exactly. We all had issues with Fox. He didn't right, handle right, it. We right. have a so shitty coach. Here's a coach learning, as you said. Greg, first, before my father's. Or your dad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here he is. He's admitting he fucked up with the preseason. He's admitting that there needs to be a quarterback competition. So he's taking strides there. That's all we could do now. No games are being played. The tape is already out there. It doesn't lie from last season. And there what you they go, did. man. Plank was on here talking about the short side runs that I was flipping out for fucking Jump Street with this shit. Just, I just destroyed this guy, Matt Nagy, even in the NFC North Championship year as Aldo wrote a fucking song that I was being too hard on this guy. <laughs> I did. Remember? <laughs> but the chips, the chips were laid down. Now you're year three, too. Mitch is year four. Mitch has to do what he needs to do. Matt Nagy has to do what he needs right. to do. Right. And let's be honest. If Mitch goes out there and balls the fuck out and Great for the takes thing. this job and run, runs away with it, that's good for all of us. That's Everybody. good for the organization. It's and that's... only not good for who, Shane? Tell us who. Yeah, the guy up above your head in the Brady Bunch picture that we're on, Greg Braggs. About the cast, I hear people in the back. 
I really, and, and I think this is his best Fuck opportunity. Cat. That's why I was excited when they got Foles because of all the different names that could have brought in, brought in Cam or Teddy or any of these guys. I was like, okay, those guys will just take his job. Foles, I just thought was perfect because not only he will be the good soldier. Even he, you heard it today how he talked yeah, he's about a good, what, he, he's, he's, he's going to help boy. Mitch. Exactly, he's a, exactly like I said. He's a good Christian boy. He's going to help Mitch. But and, don't and, think- and even if it hurts him because then he can opt out. And John D. Filippo is going to help Mitch. I I feel really good about this. I really hope there's a camp. Did you watch the tape? Never lies. I did last night Foles. before I turned on you. So what did you think? <laughs> what did you think of Nick Foles? Thought the music sucked. I liked some of the deep ball throws. The, the, some of those deep ball throws in there were like dime balls. You're like, okay, wow, when he steps up and climbs the ladder. Yeah. You yep. know, you could see that. But then there's, there's so many instances, and I I've seen them myself. And then and then you you know elaborated them on tape never lies. The 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 Humpty Dump plays as I referred to a few weeks ago, where I compared him to Mike Lennon is. There's just a there's times in every game with him where he looks like a statue and makes a terrible decision, just right. like any quarterback, like you said about Mitch or anybody yep. else. Everyone's gonna make a mistake. The exactly. other guys on the side are getting paid too. It's just about how many mistakes you make. So I mean, yes, he's gonna push Mitch. And exactly. It's, it's not. So that, it's not so much that Mitch can't handle because he's been. How long has Nick Foles been in the league? If he was a great quarterback, he'd be a starter somewhere. He, Mitch has. A, Mitch has a real shot here. It's not like this guy is a world beater. Of course, beater. he's got a shot. Right. So That's I'm the, excited no, to see this. I'm no Foles fan. Everybody knows that. I'm not a big Nick Foles guy. But another thing from his um, teleconference that he had today is he said, guys. If I didn't do this crazy restructure to my contract, I would not be here. Yes, I would still be in Jacksonville. And why do you think he agreed to that? Do you think he just agreed to it because Matt Nagy is here or because he likes the city of Chicago? No, because he looked at the fucking quarterback situation. He said, I can fucking go there and beat the number 10 out. And yep. I could fucking play well on a great team with well, an elite a good defense. Thing for the Bears. And then and I can opt didn't... out after year one, and I can make my fucking money again. So the thing about it is, I it, it's it's always it's yeah, it's about competition. What, what else did he say though, Shane? But Nick, he also oh, talked about culture. And exactly. He probably didn't like what was going down in Jacksonville exactly. either, and valued rather being right, in right. Chicago even but as a backup. I mean, I he's mean, a seriously. competitive guy too, though, and that's where you can't you can't sleep on him talking about culture and no lo- Jesus no. and all this stuff. He's coming here to fucking take over the the QB one. He's not going to fucking lay down and just. If he doesn't, and I'm not a, I'm not a fool's guy. I'm just telling you. Right. If he doesn't come in here. To be QB one, then he's not the that's fucking right guy either. No, but that, that's the that's, that's, that's what's gotta that, happen here. I, Those fans, Shane, that are out there flip flopping and they don't like this. They've never played a down of football in their fucking life. No. They don't understand the mechanism and the manipulation and the mental fortitude that you have to do and deal with as a coach, no. as a player. No, they don't fucking get it. No, they don't get it at all. So no. They're just wanting a story for their Madden fucking franchise. They're getting fired up for shit like that. But the reality is everything about this, if it's a true competition, as Aldo said, as I said, then the Bears benefit for it in the long run. Because if the best man wins, that's going to be the best thing for the Bears. Now, I came away from the tape never lie and cutting all his stuff and Shane... Credit to you telling me go back as well, put the Super Bowl at least in there, and to give people perspective well, on all of it. The, which, I told you about the fucking dime ball to Alshon on the Alshon top. Alshon Jeffrey, too. Yeah, exactly. To see this guy, this is not Mike Glennon. This is, this is a different animal. And to Greg, I agree with you. It's Mitch, just about how many mistakes you make. Exactly. Mitch has to go in there and battle because Foles is going to come in here prepared and ready to do the same thing. And then guess who's going to decide the teammates, the confidence that you see resonating off of number 12 out there, believing in the players 
at that position is going to resonate who's the star. We're all going to know. We're going to break it down here. But the reality is, I think Mitch has been typecast wrong completely, 100%. I feel like coach, offensive line, tight end issues, all of that aren't into consideration. But this might be the motivating move, move to help Mitch get over that fucking whatever that's choreographed and rehearsed and start being a fucking filthy fucking animal and stop being a fucking rehearsed fucking pussy. Is everyone in the chat room on fucking crack tonight? That's what I want to know. Oh, my God. It is Friday. We're at day 23 of the coronavirus. So, yes, (laughs) crack is the drug of choice. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. Why? What's going on in the chat, Master <laughs> chat. Just, a It's lot. just a lot of nonsensical things that really... I will have, tell you that right now we're in the process of doing that, but one word that just continues to keep coming up with with Ryan and myself is, is the word obsession. <laughs> obsession. Yeah, and uh, he said that today. What the hell did he say? He had another one. To, it was obsession. More, what did he say? Do we have said, more audio, Aldo, to get us amped up? Sure. Let's see. Um, what do you got? I'll play the Robert Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> the coin flip. No, I've got. Uh, this is about the the search for uh, the quarterback during free agency. We knew there were going to be a lot of options at quarterback in, in this free agency period. Uh, we knew we'd have an opportunity to increase competition there with those options that existed. So we, we kind of went through through each one of those and talked about each one. I think. When we got to Nick, it was really, you know, a collective effort. I think, you know, the grades kind of independently came in first, and they all came in very strong. Uh, just a talented player. I think Matt just said it, you know, the fact that he's played in some big games, performed well in those big games, that carries a lot of weight. Um, then you throw that in. You know, we so, have a lot of people in our building that are comfortable mess. with him as a person and the makeup. Um, <laughs> so all the same the people easier. who said that, so said that about you know, that Mitch Trubisky. Kind of, uh, That's the funny that, that thing. Kind of came- hey, we had total consensus in the building on Mitch, except John Fox. We didn't even fucking tell him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We didn't even tell that motherfucker. <laughs> Did they ask Matt Nagy about Nick Foles? This is crazy, Fox out man. to pick up the pizza that day. Like, John, John, swing by G- Giordano's. We ordered a few pies. Hard 4803 says enough of that fucking asshole. No more Ryan Pace. He's right. I mean, it is. it has unfortunately gotten to the point where everything that comes out of Ryan Pace's mouth, you just can't believe it, and it's just fucking corporate speak. There's n- it's there's corporate, nothing. exactly. And, and when we come off an interview with Doug Plank, and he talks about the passion needed for this game. Ryan Pace has never had that kind of passion. He doesn't know what the, what the trenches are like. He doesn't know when your fucking heart is beating out of your chest and you're fucking worried you can't go another play, but you got to go another play in order to win the fucking game. He doesn't know to rely on a teammate to make a fucking big play and to stay in your role and, and to sacrifice. He doesn't know any of that shit Doug Plank knows about it Gary Fensick knows about it tons of other bears who are qualified to be on this staff know about it but hire me draft Dr. Phil Otoshin knows about it hell yeah I know so I will fucking change this team it just drives me fucking nuts it has (laughs) things that we've said had fucking happened here Mm. and to your point Aldo you know People will say, well, Ryan Pace played at Eastern Illinois. He played football. He kn- if Ryan Pace loses his job, or we'll, sh- we'll say when he does, does <laughs> he give really- a fuck about the Bears? No. Thereafter? Exactly. And that's the reality of fucking hiring an Ernie fucking Accordsy to find the fucking person, George, you fuck. That's the fucking stupidity. That's that this George McCaskey is talking about in case anybody takes that the wrong yes. way. Yes. I'm not Thank talking you. about any other fucking George. <laughs> England, pool boy no. George. No George. No. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Braggs. <laughs> Braggs no. officially got off. George off the McCaskey. <laughs> you need the fucking. You're the charter franchise. Your grandfather fucking built the NFL. 
The trophy should bear his fucking name when you win the Super Bowl. There is no NFL without George Hallis. There is no. He bailed out the fucking Packers. The whole fucking story should be a movie so the motherfucker can get the credit he deserves. But anyway, there's never gone into the blood of passion for the franchise. Because at this point, when you look historically at it, when you've won, what did Dicka feel for this franchise? Every fucking thing. I'm telling you. And there's something to that loyalty. And it's not a meatball thing. Like, let's hire Mike Singletary to be our head coach. Oh, God. It's about the reality of something professional going in there and giving a fuck about the whole thing down to its core. I can't, I swear to you guys, fucking mask on, hat on, glasses, plastic wrap everywhere, going out shopping today. And I was going to the car and I'm like, well, maybe if. Brian Pace loses his motherfucking job. Does he give a fuck about the Bears? No. He doesn't. And that fucking bothered me. So it's strange. It's ironic that Aldo brings this up. Because you just listen to Doug Plank. And I've said it a hundred times, if not more. Gary Fensick should be taken over for Ted Phillips. Greg Ballard called these motherfuckers out and told them, you got to get rid of the cancer. I'm probably not even supposed to say this. And he was talking about Ted Phillips. That was one of the things in his stipulation that he wanted in regards to being the GM of the Bears. Ballard, who, by the way, loves the Bears. He's been with the Bears. Knows everything about them. Was a scout with the Bears. And you didn't hire that guy because Ernie Accorsi said so. And that's where the fuck we are. Again, we got a season, but I think it's imperative that we say this shit because it's the heart and soul of the Chicago Bears. It's just so disappointing. Let to me listen ask you to something, Bill. You know, I was listening today, uh, you know, the ESPN 1000 people, they were doing the call in for a celebrity and Bobby Douglas called in and he was kind of sharing the exact same sentiments Doug Plank was. I found it interesting. It wasn't like a T, but there was a lot of things where it was like he didn't like how the, the consistency, there was no consistency in the offense. You were just hearing a lot of the same right, hyperbole right, right. that we heard with Doug Plank. And then he got around to the point of saying that he liked Mitch and he actually believed in him as a leader. And I know everyone says that's so overplayed with, you know, Mitch Trubisky at the quarterback position. But you're just sitting there talking about wanting a guy that his passion is for being the best ever and putting his heart and soul on the field. And that, to me, is what Mitch is. You know, We're that gonna was, find out, Greg. That's the great yeah, yeah. thing I mean, about this. Well, you we can are, have your heart and soul, but what if you suck? There's not. I mean, my heart and soul's exactly. in it, but that don't mean I can walk out there and sling exactly. sixty-yard touchdowns. You know what I mean? So people just fucking have so much recency bias. But why does Bobby Douglas and Doug Plank see it, and they're more of the old school mentality? But they see the quarterback intangibles you need, and they're like, yeah, because Bobby Douglas. Didn't sound like over the hill. He sounded like he's watching the Bears. Greg, and so I, know, I, I value I, their opinion. I do a tape, never lies. Dude. And I've got people on there critical that I'm I'm hyping Mitch. How can I? I can't. It's not a video game that I can control. I'm not fucking cherry picking. No. I'm showing you the reality of this fucking guy. And there's so much to like about this kid's game. And we've said it. Go back to the New England Patriots versus the Bears at Soldier Field. And Mitch scrambles right, remember? And he comes back around and he scrambles and Cody White here fucking pancakes some fucking Patriots ass and Mitch scores a touchdown. If that was Patrick Mahomes, that fucking highlight would have played on SportsCenter every fucking day. Deion Sanders would have fucking had it. Yo, my homie, what up? And and they're talking. Like, Mitch Trubisky got nothing. It was a fucking mention 
And 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 Bears fans forget, you go into on Favre night. Remember Shane? They beat their ass there. And Bears fans, remember, we didn't have last call at that time. But we had 100 proof that week, and we were talking. It's so disappointing because we beat the Packers. Thought no it was one a turning point. Us. And they Thought don't it was fuck, a turning point, right. Yeah, they don't even highlight it. They did Everybody on the panel except Dicka picked the Packers. And they didn't even talk. They talked about the Packers' woes for a fucking week. Not the fact that the Bears... And this is over and over and over. So there's a national narrative about Mitch. Because I watch the tape and I see different. I see potential to be good. I see good throws. Like that fucking tech tweet. It gets me fucking so fired up, this social distancing tweet versus Mitch. Where you got to be ten feet apart, or whatever that fucking thing right. is. So, so I, at least fifteen people have texted that shit to me, and I'm like, uh, okay, it was it, that's so cute? It's not even fucking true, but it, that's a national thing because oh, of the that, way they that's talk. what this city is, man. They love making their memes. I can remember in Shane can too. As a Bulls fan, when Derrick Rose was getting hurt every year, and they yep. started making Mr. Glass memes, and they'd mock him exactly. for his, you know, transgressions. Have and now, now every time he comes back to the UC, what do they chant? MVP, you know. And look They're at Jay so... Cutler, how much they are uh, adore him. It's all they've been talking about for the last week. They had the game on the other day, and what was he carried by Shane? You know, some fumbles by the defense, a running game. They were throwing a bunch of screen yep. passes, and everybody's acting like, he, oh, man, remember the good old days? Like, they said, right. so, that's the same junk. Listen, I don't fucking stand up for anybody that fucking sucks on football field. That's not in my DNA. If you know anything about me, I will fucking throw down. I will come back to Twitter I will fucking fight anybody over this bullshit. That, I don't fucking have any fucking stake in the game. I cheer for the fucking jersey. I say it every time. And when I see someone being fucking falsely, you know, claimed and analyzed, then I have a right. I have a job to do. And the tape never lies. Thousands of fucking people Watch that shit. You don't think someone will criticize me if I'm making shit up or I'm wrong? I'm not. There's a lot to like about Mitch. What we don't know about Mitch is who he is when he looks in the mirror. I don't like that he's silent. I want to see that he's pissed off. And maybe Nagy has that. Maybe this is the motivating factor to get the best out of the, uh, the Mitch Trubisky that I've seen. But I know we won the NFC North. Not despite Mitch Trubisky. It was because of Mitch Trubisky. And these fans that have turned coat and have this fucking story and have it all written, you know, shame on you. Don't come back to the fucking bandwagon. And that's not me being a Mitch fan. That's me being a football guy. I don't know yeah. how you watch him and say he fucking sucks. You know who fucking sucked? Mike Glennon sucked. Shane, Shane. Matthews sucked. Shane, do you these, think that both these guys aren't going to work out? Like, to me, this is a win-win, as I've been saying for weeks. Foles, K Trubisky, quarterback competition, sure, there's a, wins. There's you absolutely know, I mean, a chance of that. That's that's why I in, I know people don't agree with me, but I, I don't particularly care about that either. That's why I think it's important. because You, you could literally go in the next offseason and you have not a single fucking quarterback – on this roster, then you've already backed yourself into a corner in free agency and into the draft. That's why I think that's why I have no problem if if Ryan Pace and more more particularly Matt Nagy see a quarterback that they believe in that can run their system that has the tools that he covets at that position. That's why I think it's important that they pull the trigger on it. Yeah, in the second round. I don't give a shit. Just like you say, just like Phil just said, I'm cheering for the jersey. It's not. It's true. I'm 43 years old. I want these guys to win. I sure if Mitch goes out there and wins, great. 
That's that's great. That's wonderful for the fan base. It's wonderful for the Chicago Bears organization. There's also just as much of a chance that Mitch isn't here next year. There's just as much of a right. chance Nick Foles isn't here next year. And then what do you got? You've backed yourself into a corner. And you can say that it's a... Uh, I think it's better than having the five-year deal Cam, though, right? Yeah, but Cam's... I mean, it's been I'm proven saying, now that Cam's... Having not, the one-year deal guy as opposed to the five-year deal of yeah, Teddy Cam or Cam. was never going to get a five-year deal. He's 30. Well, whatever. I'm just yeah, saying. But I'm just... I'm just saying, yeah, no, you, the Bears, if they ever get, listen, Teddy Bridgewater, if they gave him a four-year deal, was going to be your fucking guy. Right. It's but never going to be. A, that, I'm glad. Never going to be a competition ever. But I'm, you aren't get, you glad that didn't happen? Because I don't want Teddy Bridgewater for the next four years. I want better. I was, I was never a Teddy guy. I, I think said that I'd I, rather I, see Mitch. I think Aldo. I think that was your number one option in the off season, right, Teddy? That, that is correct. Originally. Right, too. That is, yeah, yeah. I like Teddy too, but that's I. Listen, y- you can have. I had this conversation with Tooch yesterday, and I know. Listen, when I said that, I, I talked to Tooch about when he was saying running back, and and Barrelisimo said running back. I'm not making fun of them for saying that. I'm just saying I don't. To me, it doesn't make sense. I feel like you can find a running back that you can win with in today's NFL. Pretty much anywhere in this draft. There's, I'm a uh, Lamichael P. Ryan guy. I think you can win with a guy like that at running back. I don't need to take a guy up top. My biggest thing is you can have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. You can have an elite running back. And you can have a pretty good quarterback and not win a playoff game. You're the Dallas Cowboys. I'm just saying the offensive line and the we running beat. back. We beat their ass on our field. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It takes so much more than that. It's That's where they're right. Everybody needs to be better. I mean, you don't think Akeem Hicks coming back to this defense is going to make an enormous difference? Of course it is. You don't think uh, Robert Quinn instead of Pussy Boy Floyd is going to be better for the Bears? Some of these reporters. Yeah, but Mark uh, Potter. I think Mark Potter. <laughs> Mark Potash had the most embarrassing question of the oh day. I totally. About that. I'm like, a, oh, my God. Him and Arthur Arkish. Holy cow. I'm like. Yeah. How you, do you. Do you this even. going to be an issue because he said that he prefers to play in the 4-3. And I'm, I heard that my whole body tense up. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> these guys really have no idea what's going Hold on. Hold on, I'm, Shane. Lawrence Taylor might not fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do we fuck? <laughs> How are these guys asking questions? Like, and I was pissed at Pace because Pace should have said to them, "Yes, I agree." Or, um, guys, we play. Do your fucking research. Eighty-five <laughs> percent of time in a four-man front, and rushing the quarterback is what we do in that four-man. F- oh my god, so dumb, so dumb. Some of these fucking other networks are dumb too, thinking that Robert Quinn isn't better than Leonard Floyd. That's like saying fucking Mike Glennon's better than fucking Mitch Trubisky. Hey, guys, uh, we got 10 minutes left because uh, the I Have a Stream guys uh, are uh, coming in at 8.30 to talk about... TV shows. Well, they're to gonna stream. have to wait. <laughs> gonna have to wait. <laughs> we let's let's talk for the next ten minutes or so about something that transpired today, or should we leave that for next the next one hundred proof and finish our thoughts on the presser? What yeah, we you? can't do it. We can't do it in ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I mean, it's up proof. to you guys, but they did say they would push. Um, um, Joey and Tooch just. DM me and said they would wait if you guys want, but it's up to you. We can. Uh, you know, we I can think we can make it better because I think we have things that we can put together now. Yeah, oh, we yeah. can put it together. Yeah, let's, All right. let's, let's, let's finish our, our thoughts on football for the next ten minutes, and let, just let me tease that for next Wednesday's one hundred proof show, we are going to expose the ruthlessness, the lack of. <laughs> Sympathy, empathy, remorsefulness on of one of our favorite people here at Bears Bar Room. We are going to showcase the fact that this guy aligns himself with Satan. 
<laughs> and uh, no sunshine when so, so that will serve the darkness <laughs> every day. So that will we serve found out sunshine when he's gone, when he's gone, and Phil's gonna cry when he's gone. When he's on is, this Bragg, is this Bragg's new thing to fucking rip down the end of the show on every every show we do? No, he just. <laughs> Oh, by Just the, take it, piss by, all over it. By the end of every show, he's he's about six Jack Daniels. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> All right, so uh, well, back, we'll, let's let's get. What some... we did find out was that I'm the compassionate one. Greg's a heartless <laughs> asshole, and Aldo is a conniving Puerto Rican that sits in the background and plays us all like puppets. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I've never and denied Phil, that. <laughs> Phil is an emotional mess. <laughs> I look forward. to for all of the soap <laughs> opera dramatics. And here's what we'll do. Unless there's some major football news that comes out over the next several days, we're going to start 100 Proof with this topic. We'll, we'll put together an open that will blow your socks off. All right, let's get some final thoughts on today's presser. I know uh, we have not talked about any of the what the other players said, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> all, about, it's all about the quarterback anyway. I mean, it's all going to come down to that. Exactly. But yeah, Robert, Robert Quinn not knowing the defensive coordinator was Chuck Pagano, I thought was interesting. Hey, it's like Flip some podcasters. Point, I thought it was... Some Bears podcasters don't know that they hire an offensive coordinator. Right? So it's the same thing. And I, if he doesn't know him, I, I, as long as he's sacking quarterbacks, I can give a shit. He could think that our – Defensive coordinator is Estelle Getty from the Golden Girls, for all I care. Exactly. You know, don't sack Estelle <laughs> Getty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that was interesting, his commentary. I like the it, fact that he chose the Bears on a coin flip. I well, missed that. I'm not buying that. I, I, listen, I know this Eric Lambert. It it's all about this, motherfuckers. Eric Lambert's going to be pissed off when you said that, Phil. But... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Feel that vibe here in the Bears Ballroom Radio Network. That's what Robert Quinn was looking for. And he Plain got it here. Right, Aldo? Plain and simple. It's all about the greenbacks. And, uh... Mm-hmm. I was Not having that a, there's a, anything wrong with I was having a discussion. Well, I got to bring up Chubbs again because he had what I think is a nominee for a terrible tweet of the week. He said that the Bears. Oh. He said that the Bears should pick, pick up the 24 million dollar option on Mitchell Trubisky, and I'm like, no fucking way. This guy is likely to be the backup That's quarterback. Fully, it's yeah, yeah. Oh, no so way. you can't do that. You you if he ends up. You know, uh, kicking ass and playing really well. You can always well. tag him. Exactly. You tag him. I mean, there's no way. He was like, no, he'll fucking give you the middle finger and walk away and so forth. No fucking way. You don't. There's no way. The only reason Ryan Pace did not say today that they weren't going to uh, place the uh, tag on him was because he didn't want to answer any of those questions because it would have made Corporate. him look bad. He's going to not yeah. place the tag. It happens after the draft. And so he's not going to address that situation until fucking four months from now. That's the only reason he didn't say anything. Exactly. No fucking way they're going to pick totally. up that option. It's not even smart business. Like, you don't yeah, know. Exactly. Exactly. What if this guy cowers to the competition? Yeah. And, hey, and, and I'm Foles God. comes in there. And, and, You're going to pay him $24 million and Foles goes in there and says, fuck everybody, look at me. Right. And he's taking you to the Super Bowl. You're going to fuck. Oh, we're paying Mitch $24 million to right. hold a clipboard. And so, you look like a dumbass then. So, Phil, if, yeah. if he goes out there and, and throws for 40 touchdowns this, this season and demands $250 million contract, fuck it, give it to him. He, if he if he plays that good that he that he's he he right. demands that kind of money then that, that's well, not a problem. The tag on him. The Bears exactly. want to give him that contract. <laughs> they well, that right. means he fucking blew up. Right now, if Ryan he, could pat himself on the back, and Matt Miller could go back into hiding. Yeah, mm-hmm. if they well, if Matt Miller and fucking <laughs> Douche Lombardi, but that's a story for a different day. <laughs> but if 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 Ryan Pace picks up the fifth year option on Mitchell Trubisky, then just fucking. Fold up shop no on, shit. on these guys. Oh I my mean, God, it's I would fucking not only bad lose. business. It's just a, it's a, it's the wrong decision. One, I don't know what would be worse, Shane. A, Imagine opening a second up a qu- round running back or them 
God. <laughs> Big, Imagine okay. saying publicly that you're going to have an open quarterback competition and then you just guarantee a guy $24 million in two weeks. I mean, that whatever. It doesn't. Just be brutally clear. Zero thought of throwing the football. Zero thought of running the football. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Jesus. <laughs> Hey, uh, Greg, anything in that chat room that you want to share with uh, the, the group before yep. we sign off? Yeah. Please go ahead. Got to get them some yep. music. Yeah. I yeah work well, Aldo yeah. did have that one music, music, right? Music. Can, you, yeah. can you get some, like, stab you in the back <laughs> music? <laughs> we are the chat chat room. <laughs> okay. This is I want to give a shout out to the chat room. You guys were all having fun fired up in there. Some were a little too fired up. I won't make mention to those names because we don't give attention to attention seekers. So, except for me, of course. Ryan Cox was the first in the chat. So, shout out to you. Don Diz with the first comment. Donnie gonna Diz. Actually, gonna actually play in the preseason. Imagine that. <laughs> Aldo put Greg is not Greggy Sunshine. He is Greggy Nuclear Blast. <laughs> Joe right. Hill, this so-called competition is a complete sham. Mitch doesn't stand a chance and it's bullshit. Harp 4803 Whoa. said, if it's a true competition, Nick Foles is your week one starter or the Bears are in deep shit. Fat Mike was in the chat. He said, yo, Alex, got my gear today, homie. Thanks for the quick delivery. Shout out Alex Acevedo doing a great job with the swag shop, hooking up Mike. And I saw a few others in the chat were thanking him for the his quick delivery. I'm glad that the swag Guy's shop is still in great. business. Yeah, he's a great, he's a great asset to the bar room. Appreciate you, Acevedo, the swag man. Pino Martinez. A great name. He said, I think we need to get number 46, Doug Plank, to give Mitch a fucking pep talk. <laughs> Chubb 82 <laughs> said, Mitch is going to win that competition because this media thinks Nick Foles is going to win, and they are never right about anything. So, Harp 4803 is back saying there's Doug Plank, and then there's Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. Tino Martinez said, let's give Braggs the smartest title back. So I had to throw that in there. I'm sorry, Shane. I saw a few Who said of that? Tino. Who I said Martinez? Tino said it, and Bear what is he? Stein, who's always in the Braggs corner, he said it again. And I promise you, Shane, these are not burner accounts. <laughs> oh. Tell him to tweet it out so I can make dumbest tweets of the week easy next week. <laughs> okay, to wrap these shout outs of the chat room up, Tarbill said, Mitch is going to sink or swim. It's his job to lose. Ray Rizzle, Foles is established. Mitch is hungry. Chase Bears fan said, Nagy is obsessed to run to the weak side. <laughs> Joe Hill said, fuck yeah, Phil. Keep talking that shit. And Tino Martinez said, Aldo is a rat sniper. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that is for sure. <laughs> Matt, or my, so I'll tell for, night, for, for Wednesday, my, my gift to Phil is I won't talk on 100 for the whole time. You can play your intro. Are you going to mute and sneeze? I will mute, <laughs> no, and the only time I talk is for the shout outs for the chat room other than that i won't say a word i am telling you today has been a dramatic dramatic day in <laughs> chicago bears and bears Baru history and uh we hate to yes, you we hate to leave all of our listeners wondering what the fuck happened that these guys are just keep talking yeah. about it but they don't tell us what happened well that's life we were going to keep you uh, all the peas, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that's right Buckle your seatbelt. hey uh we've got uh, 60 seconds left one quick shout out for anybody going around the Circle, Phil. I'm what shouting you out Chubbs. Keep bringing it. <laughs> there you go. Well done. Phil, who, who do you want to shout out real quick? I got to shout out Alex Acevedo and all of the people supporting the swag shop. Greg's got his swag shop, Bears Bar and hoodie. I'm pissed. I don't have one of those. That shit is sharp. <laughs> it's not a hoodie. It's my shirt with a hoodie underneath. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Outside. That's okay. kind of how I do it sometimes. Well, looks, the looks navy with the orange, that bright orange, it's sharp. You guys keep sh uh, sharing the swag. Please like go support new, us. It looks like Devin's new glasses, Phil. <laughs> 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 it does. You have to get a different... Tough, tough day at the office. <laughs> tough day at the Atosian household. Braggs, you, to got to a, you got a shot out or two, Braggs? 
I want to shout out my guys on I Have a Stream, Joey Two Scoops and uh, John Santucci. They're going to be uh, following this show up here in just a few moments. Uh, and uh, they're going to be talking about Westworld. They're going to be talking about that Tiger King crazy shit show I haven't even seen yet. And then I'm going to actually be joining the I Have a Stream game to talk about Ozarks. Jenny and I yes. actually might bolt Jenny. Jenny might actually join the show, too. She's a little nervous. She's actually putting Addison right down. Addison just got her first stern talking to a second ago. I'll leave it over that. I had to step away for a minute because she was screaming bloody murder. But we're going to try to get on I Have a Stream and talk a little bit about Ozarks. We actually buzzed through all of season three. Were you guys able to watch it with no text messages filtering in and bothering you guys? You and Jenny? (laughs) Do you remember that? No, I, 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 oh yeah, that's right. You guys are doing that. That's right. See, I, that's why I'm not sorry for anything in this world. That's right. Thank you for reminding me, Shane. See? You're right. I should have no guilt. For thank you for bringing that up. No, make sure you check out. I have a stream. That was too long of a shout out. See what you made me do, Shane. Fucking a. Check out. I have a stream coming up next. Hey, uh, speaking of that, I actually played a couple of drops today of uh, Ruth. From the Ozarks. I want to play one right here. It'll be an excellent tease for I Have a Stream. Take a listen to this scene. This is Ruth. She's a tremendous character on that show. It's the Netflix show. Yeah, oh my gosh. She's unbelievable. This is her having a conversation with a a member of law enforcement. How does that sound? Sounds like go fuck yourself. Clever. You want me to explain how that works exactly? What you do is you roll into a ball or whatever, and you take your dick, right, and you put it up your ass. <laughs> She's awesome. She's fucking awesome. <laughs> she She's, is amazing. She, I will not ruin anything for those that haven't seen it, but no, please I am. Don't. I love that girl. There's Jordy no ruined my day. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you not? Holy, Charles Leno needs to step up. What's so wrong with saying that? I guess I guess I do should have a final shout out to Phil for being such a great friend and that we love him so much. And his family, his beautiful family that I would never want to hurt. And everyone in there, I love them. I love your wife, your beautiful wife, Stephanie. I love all of them. Your sons, your daughters. Your dog, your cat. cat. That's, that's saying cat. fuck you, Greg, in the background. I can't see you. <laughs> Phil's got his background blurred. Like I said, I'm gonna my gift to you will I will finally <laughs> shut up again on a hunter proof. I started good and then I went off the rails. Off the know. rails? <laughs> <Put it nicely. laughs> oh my god. You guys you're the stuck plank with the show was a classic showcase of Greg going off the rails. That's all. <laughs> that's if right. you haven't heard it, listen, listen to the plank show. I'm going to go great. put my daughter down. You guys have a great we night. Love you, Greg, again. I'm getting called into duty. Get get over there, and then I will be listening to you on how I have a stream. And remember, everyone. Love you, guys. Greg, <laughs> roll you later, yourself man. into a ball. <laughs> and go fuck yourself. In your ass. Go fuck <laughs> And if you drink, please do not drive. And always, bad out. <laughs>